there's no denying that 2020 was a horrible year, but there is one band who take horror in their stride and turn it into something beautiful. That band is Ice Nine Kills and Spencer from the band, frontman extraordinaire and beautifully good looking corpse joins us now. Mate, welcome. Thank you so much. That's a, that's a beautiful introduction. I love it. Well, a beautiful man like you needs something like that. Now, uh, we know Ice Nine Kills have been involved in the horror scene for countless years. Uh, the last album, The Silver Scream, is uh, all based around horror movies. Now, how does a band like you take on the horrors of the year that was 2020? It was a pretty crazy year, man. Uh, like everyone else, I think it took a little bit of a period of time to adjust to it. But I think once we did and we sort of honed in on Let's look at the positives, not the negatives of everything. We really, uh, I, I think, made the most out of the time and accomplished a lot of things behind the scenes. A lot of stuff is still secretive right now that I don't think we would have been able to accomplish uh, had it been a regular year of touring. So I always try to kind of look at the uh, glasses half full of blood kind of yeah. uh, <laughs> There it is. I was waiting for that. It was such an epic year, but in saying that, there, there were so many plans that, that, that got postponed or put on hold, but, you know, it gives you time to map out and plan the murders or plan the, the secret stuff you're doing behind the scenes. Absolutely. You know, I, I couldn't have planned uh, as carefully and calculated of murders had I been on the road. You know, I, with being on the road, it, it's so much downtime and scrubbing the fingerprints and the bleach. Um, that this really gave me a chance to hone in on just how to get away with everything. <laughs> Forward thinking, that's what you do best, Spencer. Now, you re-emerge back into the scene just before Valentine's Day with, uh, I'm going to say, a, a fantastic ode and ballad to the man and legend that is Elvis Presley. <laughs> You are a crooner, mate. Well done on being able to take such a beautiful song like that and give it that creepy vibe behind it. Well, I'm so glad that you appreciate it. You know, that was a really interesting um, sort of cover idea that we had. It really came, honestly, from our creation of the Silver Stream, which was, of course, our uh, Halloween extravaganza stream that we did where we played um, a sold out show um, that we had recorded back last fall. And we kind of weaved in our own horror movie with the, with the um, famous Bill Mosley, of course, uh, from Texas Chainsaw 2 and all the Rob Zombie films. And when we were editing the film, uh, there was um, an ending scene that we knew we wanted to proceed the credits. And it was um, this, this uh, great sort of extended part where this girl was getting killed in the shower, you know, as a tip of the hat to Psycho. And uh, I thought, man, it would be so cool if we had a song that was a really um, a sort of contrasting vibe to what's going on on screen. And that's the style that I've always loved, you know, back from Stanley Kubrick with uh, Clockwork Orange and Rob Zombie using classic songs like Love Hurts, for instance, in his first Halloween. I thought, man, it would be so great if we did an Elvis song. And that's really how it came about. And uh wasn't necessarily planning to release it as an Ice Nine Kill song, but the reaction to it after the movie was like one of the top five things people were talking about. What was that Elvis cover? Was that Spencer singing? Oh man, they got to release that. So uh, like everything we do, we kind of let the, the fans um, so, sort of steer the hearse and that's how we, uh, we arrived there. Which is perfect, and I'm glad that you mentioned that this is a song that you wouldn't necessarily team up with a horror or a thriller movie. And, uh, you know, going back, my, one of my favourite franchises is the Halloween series, and, you know, the Mr. Sandman song is used all throughout the entire franchise, and it's a song that you wouldn't necessarily put with a psychotic serial killer like Michael Myers. So I think you've done it justice, and it proves just how immersed in the world of metalcore, metal, and horror you really, truly are. Well, thanks so much. And I, I couldn't agree more. You know, the uh, Cordettes song, uh, Mr. Sandman, or at least their interpretation of it, was just a stroke of brilliance uh, for whoever made that call. Um, it wasn't in the first Halloween, which I, I sometimes forget. You know, they put it in the second one and then it sort of became this staple of the series. But I've always wondered, you know, who, whose idea was that? Was that John Carpenter's? Was it Alan Howarth, who, uh, who, who did some of the scoring, I know, in part two with John? Um, but yeah, that's a, a brilliant, uh, brilliant example of that. 
Well, it goes to show, you know, what you can do when you're, uh, you know, watching these movies, taking inspiration and and turning it into the the themes that happen with Ice Nine Kills. Now, over the years, you've collected a whole bunch of fans from left, right, and all around the world who are following and appreciating appreciating what you're doing. And one couple in particular we need to bring into the conversation right now uh, to have a chat with them is uh, James and Cassandra. Now, uh, for those who aren't in the know, James and Cassandra had a very special moment that uh, was brought together because of an Ice Nine Kills show. So, James, welcome to the conversation. You've got Spencer and Brownie here. Hey, Spencer. Hey, Brownie. How are you doing today? Great. Great to see you guys. It's been, uh, oh man, over a year. And yeah. uh, couldn't be more pleased that uh, we're uh, reconnecting here. Now, for those who don't know, James, uh, can you take us through the events that took place? I'm going to say it like a crime scene. The events that took place on December 6, 2019 in Melbourne. A very special moment that ended in tears. Uh, so I I organised with quite a few friends to uh, meet over at the Ice Nine Kills pit. Uh, uh, but I decided to get everyone around there, put on a shirt with uh, a bloody yes on it because I knew that she would say yes, she'd been pressuring me for years as to why I hadn't asked her. Um, it was either ask her or be killed soon. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so pretty much waited until everyone was there. The music kicked in for an American nightmare. And as soon as the boys were out, I was down on, the, I was down on my knee doing it, just going for it because I thought, why the hell not? A beautiful way to propose at, at a show in a mosh pit in front of one of your favourite bands collectively. Spencer, on stage, obviously, would you have a situation of remembering how that went down? And, you know, if, if so, like, what do you recall from that show looking at and seeing this proposal take place? Well, to be honest, you know, when we're up there and the music is so loud and the energy is, you know, it's off the, off the chain, as we say in America, uh, I didn't really know exactly what, what had happened till after. You know, it was more of a thing like, oh, man, that's what was happening. Um, we thought originally it might have been a fight and to find out it was something obviously far from a fight. Um, but I remember I remember th th that area opening up and I thought there might have been something wrong. Maybe someone was hurt. But then I saw plotting. So my, my mind started thinking, oh, maybe it is something nice because uh, I have seen proposals at shows, but never at our show and never in the mosh pit. So that was a, a real first for me. And something that you're going to take through your entire career forever, as will this couple. And Cassie joins us now. Uh, let's, you know, go back through your emotions of, you know, being in the mosh pit with that show. You're watching your favourite band. James gets down on one knee. What's going through your head? Well, when he brought me into the mosh pit, I was terrified. I'm like, honey, honey, I'm either at the barrier or at the back. I don't mosh. I'm too, I'm too fragile to mosh. I get bruised. And then, like, the pit opened up. I was like okay, I'm going to die now. Like, this is how I'm going to die. So I was very, it was amazing. And I was surprised and just definitely a massive surprise. Like, especially like as like Eyes and Nine Kills are opening and then like there's a proposal happening. I was like, I can't believe this happened. <laughs> It's a beautiful experience to, to take. And, you know, uh, Ice Nine Kills very first time in Australia, so it will go down in history. Now, uh, what we wanted to do with you, James and Cassandra, is uh, we know that Spencer Sharnas is a, an incredible front man. Uh, he is so loving with all the craft he puts into his work. And, of course, he's watched that many horror movies. He knows how to, uh, you know for you to become uh, the survivor at the end. So what we wanted to do was pass on some advice so you two can stay loved up and married in a very Ice Nine Kills way. So Spencer, would you like to take it away and give Cassandra and James some loving advice so they stay together forever until they're zombies and they roam the earth? Absolutely. And uh, again, I'm so uh, thankful to be here with you guys again. I'm glad to see that uh, you guys are still together. And uh, just a few um, tips for making... Uh, the love last and not um, being, you know, executed in the woods, uh, you know, by a hockey mask wearing machete wielding maniac. Never have sex anywhere near Camp Crystal Lake. Um, Australia is thousands of uh, miles away from New Jersey where uh, Camp Crystal Lake is. So you should be good there. Um, basically, always have some sort of weapon on you. You notice in a lot of these slasher films, the victims just they never have proper 
uh, weaponry. And I'm not sure what the uh, carry or the, the gun uh, laws are in Australia, but anything, you know, you know, you don't need a rocket launcher, but, you know, probably some sort of uh, um, AR-14 or uh, some sort, any kind of assault rifle will do. And that's really my advice to you guys. Always pack some heat and uh, stay away from uh, Jason's woods because nothing ever good happens there. <laughs> well, it sounds like you're you're both as loved up as physically possible. You've taken on some advice from Spencer about how to fulfill yourselves and have a, a lasting, long, loving life together. Uh, the preparations for the wedding, how are we looking at? We have a uh, we we may have uh, changed our uh, wedding dance song into the first dance, the traditional first dance song. Uh, originally, it was going to be like uh, "Basket Case" by Green Day because you know we are crazy, but. Uh, uh, to commemorate everything, we thought, why not continue the uh, the trend of things? And we've uh, changed it across to uh, Can't Help Falling in Love, uh, Spencer's absolute and utter amazing <laughs> cover. Like, seriously, it, it's it's been played, I don't know how many times, by both of us. And absolutely, it's up there with the original Elvis. Wow. Well, thank you so much. That's such a great compliment. And it's funny, you know, when we were uh, kind of tossing around the idea of, hey, let's really release this. Um, someone on our team mentioned, man, this is going to be the wedding song for Ice Nine Kills fans till the end of time. So I'm so glad to hear that that's, uh, that's coming true. Yeah. Like, we'll talk about it. And, like, we didn't – it was just unanimous, unanimously, like, yeah, that's going to be our, dance, our, like, bridal dance. Like, best way to start off, like, first dance, dancing to Ice Nine Kills, the band we got engaged to, like – just perfect start. <laughs> it's your beautiful first full circle kind of story you got right there, guys. You got proposed at the show, and then now you get to take on this married life with this beautiful new cover that they've put out. Exactly. exactly. And now, now all I have to do is ordain the ceremony, and we'll be completely full circle. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I've done some funerals, but it would be my first wedding, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Well, once the borders open up, I'm sure it'd be a great idea to get you down here if we can. If not, we'll just have to chop you up into little pieces and put you back bit by bit. How about that? I'm all for it. I never was one for customs anyway. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everyone. It's been a fantastic catch up. We've wanted to see what's happened so far uh, with your loving couple. So James and Cassandra, thanks for taking the time out. Spencer, thank you so much for the advice. Uh, all the best with the future. And can we expect more thrills and spills this year from Ice Nine Kills? Oh, you can expect a lot of bloodshed and it's going to seep to down under. I'm telling you that. Oh,